far as treatment, these are the things that I can tell you. It's one slide, okay? There's not a lot that I can tell you very specific on treatment. Supportive care is really going to be important. Okay? That's going to be the, the first thing. So making sure that they're eating, drinking, we do the nursing care if they are in a sling, those sort of things. We hope we don't reach that point, but good supportive care. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, so the phenylbutazone, flunixin, megalamine, ketophen, those drugs. They've used them, but there's no clinical evidence that they change the course of the disease. Okay? We use those anti-inflammatories, and they're probably indicated, okay? but to tell you that to treat or not to treat with those is really going to change the course of the disease, we certainly can't. Steroids, same way. We've used the steroids for years had been used as far as in these diseases with the, the herpes. And again, there is no clinical evidence that we can say that, boy, steroids change the course of the disease or we see a profound response with the steroids. Immunostimulants, again, that's been one of the questions that we've been getting a lot of recently. Should I be giving my horse some immunostimulants? And there's no evidence that there's any benefit in those as well. So again, kind of gets back to the top. Good supportive care, good bedding, good footing for the horse, okay? Antivirals. There is some evidence in experimental studies that there may be some benefit in using the antivirals if you use them early in the course of the disease. Okay. And the acyclovir was the first one that was out, but we have very poor bioavailability. So the horses, you give it to them and you don't get blood levels that are meaningful whatsoever. The valacyclovir is the one that, that they have shown some benefit to it, and it's a couple different ways how they look at it as far as reduction in the viral shedding, improvement in clinical signs in experimental models, okay? And then there's some evidence as far as the uh, ganglocyclovir as well that maybe it may be beneficial. Problem is it's quite expensive. The valacyclovir just came off of patent, so it is now, there is a generic form of it, so it is probably going to be more affordable, but it's not an inexpensive venture when you start looking at it. And it should be, again, early in the course of the disease is what they have found that it seems to be most beneficial. Okay? And it may reduce viral shedding. Okay. So here's the important stuff. Okay? So if you've fallen asleep, come back. We'll try right, real quickly. We're getting close to the end. So prevention, a lot of it is just good common sense. Okay? This virus can be spread, as I already said, by aerosol, but also by fomite. And fomite means your hands, tack, anything, the, the water buckets, the bars on the, the stall, anything that virus can live on can act as a fomite. Okay? So if you're going from stall to stall and touching horses and getting the virus on your hands and going to the next one, you're shedding it and spreading it. Okay, so it's not just nose-to-nose -nose contact or just spread of the virus by sneezing and coughing. It can be spread on fomites. Tack, okay, putting on a, so using sharing tack. Simple things like, you know, you're filling the water bucket. Where's the hose go every time in the water bucket? All the way in the water, right? Then you take that and go to the next one, all the way in the water. Okay, so it's just simple things like that that uh, you're, you're taking that virus, you're shedding it, okay? Isolate any new arrivals at your stable, okay? And not just for seven days, all right? I really think that when these horses come in, you have to look at a minimum of 14 days, and I prefer 21 days, okay? As far as to truly try to isolate them. Isolate horses returning from shows for the very same reason, okay? If they've been infected, but they're not showing those signs during that incubation period, and you've thrown them back in with everybody, guess what? They start sharing with everybody. Okay? And some of the outbreaks that have occurred in the last few years, that's what's typically happened. Horses have come back, co-mingled again with the general population, and then it takes off and you have an outbreak. Okay? When you're at the horse show, limit that contact. I know standing there at the end gate, everyone stands there with their horses chatting and they're all nuzzling and so on and so on. Keep the horse in the stall, go do the performance and come back. Don't be hanging out with all the other horses. Limit the contact if you can when you're at horse shows. 
Taking temperatures daily is the most important thing you can do, okay? Twice a day, morning and night, because that's going to be the sentinel sign that you're going to see if they've been infected. That doesn't mean they're going to get the neurologic form, okay? But it certainly just means that they've been infected. So take their temperatures daily. It's a good idea to do that on, on a regular basis, whether we're concerned about a herpes outbreak or not. At least taking it once a day when you're out there feeding is a really good idea as far as just, just general husbandry. Any horses with a fever, they need to be isolated. Don't let them just keep hanging out in that stall. Okay. And as I already mentioned, as far as if we have a positive case, they should be isolated for at least 28 days, and then there should be some testing done after that to make sure that they are not shedding. <clears throat> Some other strategies as far as to try to prevent this, if you can isolate your horses and subdivide them into certain groups, okay, so keeping the youngsters together and not letting the youngsters commingle with the older horses and the horses that never travel commingling with the horses that do travel, try to keep them seg segregated by their particular groups will help reduce the risk as far as spread. If you're just commingling everybody, then it's much more likely you're going to spread things. Minimizing the risk of exogenous, which is bringing in another horse, some horse from the outside that has herpes. The endogenous EHV introduction, that's that recrudescence of the latent disease, the latently infected horse. So by reducing stress, travel type of incidents, you know, if you're traveling and you can do it in two days, but it'd be less stressful to do it in four or five, do it in four or five. Those are the things that you have to start looking at. Maximizing herd immunity, and that's when we're going to start talking about the, the vaccinations. The important thing right away that I'll tell you as far as when we look at vaccinating, there is not a vaccine that's been proven to prevent the neurologic form. Okay. But still, maximizing your vaccine program can help out. We'll get to that and why. Okay. So, the, the, the first statement up there is just that, that there's no evidence that any of our vaccines work at preventing the neurologic form. Okay? They may reduce viral shedding during an outbreak, and that becomes important as far as sharing it with other horses. Okay? So if you have a good herd immunity, you're going to reduce that level of shedding of the virus. Even though they may get the neurologic form, there are going to be reduced incidents as far as the amount of viral shedding, okay? In at least some experimental challenge studies, the modified live has shown some benefits as far as reducing that viral load and that viral shedding, okay? Experimental, all right? But that's what we have to take from that and put it into work out in the real world, okay? So, Again, by having good immunologic protection, by having a regular vaccine protection, regular vaccine program, can certainly help out as far as controlling some of this cell-associated viremia. Okay. So it reduces that viremia potentially, but becomes important. So continue to vaccinate for the respiratory forms, vaccinate for the abortogenic form if you have broodmares, and keep that Maximize that amount of immunity that you have present in your herd, okay? Again, not proven effective against the neurologic form. This next one is the controversial one. Vaccinating in the face of an outbreak. And you're going to get a variety of, of opinions on that. But because it may provide, if the horses have been vaccinated, if you go and vaccinate them, you're going to get that nice anamnestic response. Their immune system is going to respond and get you a nice protective level. So again, it may reduce the spread of the infectious virus. It's not going to prevent the disease. It may not prevent the spread entirely, but it may reduce some of that shedding and thus maybe will reduce it. So vaccinating in the face of, the out, of an outbreak, controversial, but probably will be beneficial. So here's the conclusions again, okay? That's my plug to neuter your animals and anybody else on your list. So there is a mutation. 
There is a herpes virus mutation that is the neurologic form and it has increased likelihood of creating it, but not necessary for the neurologic form to develop. Latency, that latently infected animal and then the recrudescence or the, the, the redevelopment of that disease is critical as far as these outbreaks. <coughs> Common sense goes a long ways from keeping this from becoming a huge problem and a great um, sort of uh, huge outbreak. Okay. Isolation procedures, again, try to do your best. I realize that a lot of farms don't have a real nice area for isolation, but do the best you can. And as I said, I would, if a horse has been at a farm or a stable where there has been a case, I would have it 21 days in isolation. And when I brought new horses in, I would have it there for 21 days. Okay. Checking that temperature daily, twice a day. Okay when you were dealing with the possibility of an outbreak or you're looking at this viral problem, do it twice a day. Good policy for at least once a day. Good hygiene, wash your hands, okay? The, the, the virus, herpes virus, our disinfectants will get it, alcohol will get it, so having those hand dispensers around the barn to be using that commonly and a lot of that will help out. And as I said, keep a good herd immunity by vaccinating on a regular basis. Mm -hmm.